as you look at the industry, as you say, it's very volatile, it always goes up and down, but we stay focused on the investments. As we looked at last year, we saw an uptick in going into 2019. As we ended the year 2018, started to get a little muted. A number of our customers are re-looking at the CapEx, but we still feel good about the LNG market, the projects for the longer term. We still think the international markets are going to be positive growth. North America is where there's going to be some volatility, mm. and then also on the offshore, it's still going to take some time for that market to recover. Let's talk about a few of those issues as well. Um, I know international and offshore has been pretty strong as well. Look, are we really still very dependent on the price of crude, on the price of Brent, on the price of WTI? Because you talked about a whole host of things there as well. Not all of them should be as related to the price of Brent and WTI. And I think there is a disconnect that's occurring, but obviously the emotional aspect is always still there. Yeah. You look at the price of oil on a daily basis, but then you look at the demand. And demand is still increasing, in particular when you look at natural gas and the needs for LNG. So you've got to look at the macro picture. Over the course of the next few years, we're still going to need the hydrocarbons. So we feel this is an industry that, that you're going to continue to have investment in. Yeah, and I know that debate about hydrocarbons is going to be had later on as well, because I spoke to one of your panelists who's saying that too many people out there don't get the fact that we're going to need to invest in hydrocarbons. Are you finding that this is a problem with investors, with a certain groups of shareholders saying, we need you to carry on decarbonizing? Carbonizing. It's a debate that's been ongoing, and I think we as an industry need to acknowledge it. If you look at uh, the need for energy, though, there's still approximately a billion people that don't have mm -hmm. energy around the globe. If you look at also the opportunity to provide that, natural gas is clearly a transition fuel. And we've got to become, as an industry, more cognizant of what's the ecological environmental footprint mm -hmm. and also the carbon that's being emitted. If you look at 50 gigatons per year of CO2 emissions. About 10% of that is from the oil and gas industry. We're doing our bit as well mm. to continuously focus on it. And in fact, today, we're going to be well, announcing breaking that news we're now, yeah? reducing... Let's do this, this second, then. This is the breaking news, yeah? Well, we're going to be reducing our carbon footprint emissions by 2030 by 50%, mm -hmm. and we're committing to net zero carbon emissions by 2050. So if you look at our presence and you look at what we're doing from an industry perspective, we've already brought down BHGE's emissions by 26% since 2012. So we feel good about the trajectory we're on, but we think we can help our customers as well. Because when you look at the technology that we've been investing into, you look at what's there in the other room, it is equipment that provides less emissions, it's more reliable, more efficient. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.